Camera matching is the process of matching a 3D computer graphic camera to a 2D image so that the 3D camera matches the camera of the original image or photograph. And that way we can insert computer graphic elements into an existing photograph. For motion pictures, this is known as match moving, and that is a much more complicated and involved process, which could actually be an entire course in itself. But for still images, especially in interior architecture and interior design, 3ds Max provides a handy tool called Perspective Match. And this is a quick and dirty tool that will allow you to relatively easily match a 3D camera to an existing photograph. We need a free camera for this. It only works with one of the legacy free cameras. So go to the Create panel and choose Cameras and click Free and create it in the top viewport. Click and then right click. It's facing downward. And I've done that just to avoid confusion because I'm going to change the rotation order. The reason for this is so that my rotations will be more predictable. And if you want to know more about this, I covered it in great detail in the course 3ds Max Cinematography for Visualization. With that camera still selected, go to the Motion panel and in the Parameters sub-panel, click Rotation. In the Euler parameters, change the axis order to the last one in the list, ZXZ. And that's the optimal rotation order for a camera so that pan, tilt, and roll will occur in exactly that order. So that's done. We just need to rotate the camera so that it is pointing forward. Activate the Rotate tool. Switch the reference coordinate system over to Gimbal, which is the true coordinate system of the object and set the y-axis rotation to 90 degrees. Now the camera is all set up. Let's load it into the front viewport. Click on Front, choose Cameras, Camera 001, and also turn on Safe Frames so that the viewport is cropped to the renderable area, and the keyboard shortcut for that is Shift-F. We need a viewport background in order to use the perspective match utility. So with that camera viewport selected, go to the Views menu, Choose Viewport Background, Configure Viewport Background. In the Viewport Configuration dialog, click Use Files, and then Browse by clicking the Files button. We're taken to our current project, Scene Assets Images. Scroll down a little bit. I've got an image prepared, which is kitchenmorningart.png. This is actually a computer graphic rendering, but that doesn't matter. It could just as easily be a photograph. Click Open. And also, make sure the aspect ratio is matching the bitmap so it doesn't get stretched. Click OK. And now that image is loaded into the viewport background. We want to make sure that the rendering is the same aspect ratio. So go into the Render Setup dialog. And my current aspect ratio is 1.7778, which does, in fact, match the incoming image. The image is a 1280 by 720 rendering. If I wanted to make sure that the CG elements that I add will match pixel for pixel. I can change the output size. So let's do that. Go to the pull down list and choose HDTV video and choose the preset of 1280 by 720. So now if I render a new element in here, it will be the same pixel size as the original image. Okay, so we can close that render setup dialog. Now we're ready to actually do the perspective match. In order to see it more clearly, I want to go to the Modify panel with that camera selected and turn on Show Cone and also maybe extend the target distance a little bit. So that's going to be found a little bit lower. I just want to make the cone or frustum a little bit larger so I can see it better. Now give focus to the camera viewport. Go to the Utilities panel. Click Perspective Match. Scroll down a little bit. Enable Show Vanishing Lines. And we get six lines. These are color-coded, red, green, and blue, to correspond to X, Y, and Z in world coordinate space. What we want to do here is align these lines with linear features in the image. And for this reason, Perspective Match works very well for interiors. But if you're trying to match to an image that has no straight lines in it, you're going to have a lot of difficulty. But here, it's pretty straightforward. We want these blue or Z axes to line up with features vertically. So we can drag these around. 
And the X vanishing lines are the red ones, should line up with the X axis of the world. So we can drag these around to align them with features in the image. And as we do so, we should see something happen down here. So those are the X vanishing lines. And we've got the Y vanishing lines. Let's make sure we've got everything lined up well here. And that's pretty good for our first attempt. We can get in closer on this and make it more precise. And one way to do that is simply maximize the viewport with Alt-W. And we can move these and get it a little bit more precise. If we need to get even closer, we can use 2D pan zoom mode. Click on the plus sign, enable 2D pan zoom mode. And now we can use the middle mouse button to pan and the mouse wheel to zoom in and do this a lot more precisely. Okay, that looks like it's pretty good. So we can exit out of 2D pan zoom mode, go back to the four viewport layout with Alt W, and let's check in on our camera. Select that camera and go to the modify panel. And we see that we've got a field of view of 74.463 degrees. Well, I have a feeling that that's actually 75 degrees. So I'm gonna type in 75. I'm just gonna take that chance here. Didn't really change our rendering very much. Okay, back to the utility panel. We want to make sure that the scale is correct. We've got the right field of view, but we don't actually have the distance or scale of objects right just yet. And to do this, it's helpful to create what's known as an anchor object. And in this case, I'm gonna create an anchor object that's going to be the same height as the room, which I know to be three meters in height. So that's another thing. You kind of have to have an idea of the scale of the objects in your scene to use this most effectively. You don't have to have super precise measurements, but you need to have some idea of how large things are. I'll create a box. Go to the Create panel, to Geometry Standard Primitives, Box, and drag that out in the Perspective view to create the footprint, and then release the mouse and drag up to create the height of the box, and then click to create the box and then right click to exit the box creation tool. And we can see the box here in the camera viewport. And let's go to the modify panel. And I'm using meters as my units of measurement. We'll set the length to one meter, press tab, the width to one meter, press tab, and the height to three meters, which again is the height of the room itself. All right, so that's done. Now we can go back to the utilities panel and choose the anchor point. So you have anchor point here, Click on Pick Anchor Object, and then click on the box in the viewport. And box 001 is listed here. And now we want to play around with the vertical and distance adjustments here. So vertical is the first one, so let's click and drag on that spinner. What we want to do is to move that so that the camera is at approximately the same height as the original photograph was. And we do just have to kind of feel our way through this. There's no real precise way to do it, but we can kind of get an idea when these grid lines actually line up with elements in the image. Now let's move the box so that it's farther back. And what we're trying to achieve here is the box fitting precisely into that corner there. Now we can adjust the distance parameter here. And that looks like it might be pretty close, but we will probably have to go back and forth a few times with this. So we can move that box forward or back, trying to get the distance correct. If we want to adjust that, we need to make sure we have the camera viewport selected. And at this point, I think I've pretty much got what I need, more or less. The grid lines aren't precisely aligning here, so we can change this vertical parameter. We want the grid to sit exactly on the floor, and then tweak the distance a little bit. So that's pretty close. And now if we move that box around, it should correspond to a box that's three meters tall in the actual scene. And to just double check that, let's go back to the modify panel and set the height to one meter. 
and move it around in X and Y and position it close to these other features here and try to get a sense if that's the right size. And it looks pretty close because if we had a box that was a meter tall, it would be about twice as high as that dining table. So now I've got my camera matched to the existing 2D image and I can insert 3D graphic elements and render those and they should match exactly with the photograph or the rendered image. And that's how to use the perspective match utility.